What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and today I want to show you guys how to set up your own music server using Ampache and Ubuntu. So as I stated in the intro of the video, I wanted to show you guys something super cool. Now, if you guys didn't know, I'm a big music head. I have a big collection of music that I have accumulated over a number of years. And in order to listen to my music from anywhere in the world, I set up what they call an Apache server. And this can easily be set up on a Ubuntu server and you can listen to all your music no matter where you are, right within your browser. So today I'll walk you guys through how to set one of these things up. That way you can set up your own server and listen to your music no matter where you are in the world. Now, before I get started, I want to show you guys Apache's website and then we'll go through the install process and get it all set up. So let's switch over to my browser. Okay, cool. So I'm at Apache's website is Apache.org and don't get it confused with Apache is Apache. So A M p-a-c-h-e dot org and this is the main website and as you can see what it says on the first page is a web-based audio video streaming application and file manager allowing you to access your music and video from anywhere using almost any internet enabled device and what's super cool about Apache? they have a app that you can use on android phones i'm not sure about ios but I know there is an app out there that'll allow you to connect to your Apache server on Android devices. And of course you can access it directly from your web browser. So one cool thing about this application, whenever I've worked most IT jobs, especially when it came to programming, I like to listen to music. It'll help me focus on actually writing the code. That was just something that helped me while I was sitting there all day programming. And music is one of those motivators for me in order to figure things out a lot of times. And so no matter where I worked, I had my Apache server at the house running and I could just connect to it whenever I felt like listening to music to help me focus on whatever I'm doing at work. So that's one of the use cases that I recommend people check this out for because it's a dope application that runs right on the web server and you can have full access to all your music from this application now before i switch over to the terminal i wanted to show you guys the github page and as you can see it's free and open source anybody can use it you don't have to pay for it in any way but this is the code so you can verify everything about the application is constantly being maintained and currently they're on version 5 so Apache 5 just came out maybe a couple weeks ago or maybe a month ago i'm not 100 percent sure but that's what prompted me to actually make the video since the new release of Apache. but they have plenty of documentation if you have any questions but i'm gonna walk through and show you guys how to set up Apache 5 on your web server so let's get started so i'm in the terminal of a server that i just spun up in the cloud and one thing about this application you don't want to run it in the cloud because you're constantly streaming data and that's how cloud providers work it's all based on the bandwidth that you use in most cases and they'll charge you based on the bandwidth so if you constantly listen to music or if you have multiple people listening to music from your server in the cloud you're going to be charged a heavy price by these providers so i recommend you set something like like this up at home and if you don't have the option to use port 80, then you can always use a non-standard port and that'll allow you to connect to the server. You just have to know the port. So let's go down and get started. And the first thing you want to do with any server that you're installing something on is to run a sudo apt updates as well as an upgrade. So I'm gonna run both of those commands together. So sudo apt upgrade. And I'm gonna put the dash Y on there. That way we don't have to worry about hitting Y. We just go through it. And I was positive that this system was up to date. I always have a habit of updating the server as soon as I spin it up. So I knew it was up to date. So let's go through and install everything. I'm gonna install all the, I'm gonna install Apache 
first because you need a web server as well as a, a couple dependencies and so i'm not gonna go through them all but i'll tell you the gist of them but like i stated apache uh crime uh ffmpeg which crime i'm sure is already on the system uh php as well and a whole bunch of php dependencies that you need and i'll have this stuff listed down in the description of the video so check it out if you need it as well as let's see zip and unzip and one of the applications that's very important is ffmpeg that's used uh by the system as well so let's go down and press enter and install all these applications and i'll be back when they actually complete okay cool so we installed all our applications and dependencies let's go on and check the status of our apache server so let's type sudo uh, system ctl and then status uh, apache 2 boom and press enter and that will just let us know that apache is enabled and that's what we're looking for right here enabled and then it's also running so we're good to go with apache it's up and running so i'm gonna press q to drop back down to the terminal and one thing i know for sure will be needed within apache as far as modules that you can activate is rewrites so i'm gonna go down and uh activate that module so let's go sudo a2 enable mod and then rewrites and this is our rewrites uh module so let's press enter and that'll activate that and let's go ahead on and restore the apache because that's one thing you're gonna have to do uh so we can run the system ctl command again and just type restore right here press enter boom and that'll restart apache so we're good to go now let's go ahead on and get composer because that's one of the applications we need to install all the extra dependencies for Apache. And it's best to just go on and install Composer now. And I already have the link to it, but if you need the link, just uh, search for Composer. And I'll put the link down in the description of the video again. But I'm going to drop that in there and I'm going to just double get or uh, W get the Composer application. And that way we can run things using Composer. Now we have to move it to a specific location on the system. So other users on the system, because we have to use another user in order to run Composer against Apache. And I'll show you guys that a little bit later. But let's press enter and that'll actually move it to user, local, bin, and then Composer. So we're good to go there. Now, one thing with Composer, we have to make it executable. And in order to do that, you have to use uh, a command called chmod. And if you're confused about that, uh, just look at, look through my videos. I'm sure I have a video on chmod, how to actually manage users and groups and, and files, which includes the chmod and as well as the chown command, which I'm going to use that command next. But let's type sudo uh, chmod. And then what you want to do is put the plus and then x and that will turn a file to executable and let me just go on and uh paste the directory you know all the way to the file in there so i don't have to type it all the way out but let's press enter and that'll make the file executable and then also one last thing we need to do is actually modify our var www directory or directory that's used by apache which is where all the files or host it by default so all your website website files are stored under for www or that's the default fault location that most people store their web files and what we need to do is basically change the ownership of that directory to www-data which is done majority of the times for websites they use that account that's on the system so i just pasted it in so i didn't have to type it out but basically i'm uh using the dash capital r option which means recursive so anything under var www will change the ownership to www dash data so anything from www and any directory underneath it the ownership will be changed to this account so let's press enter boom good to go now let's go on and install Apache or actually download it to the specific location that we want it in, which is under VOR www. 
But one thing I'm gonna do is log into the www-data accounts so we can run the composer install under that account. And I'll show you guys that now. So let's type sudo and then su and then dash. And then what we want to do is put in the account that we're trying to use, which is www-data. And then we need to use a uh, dash s. And this will just basically tell us to sh tell the system what shell we want to use. So bin, and sorry about that. Hold on, bin. Uh, and I accidentally hit uh, the enter button, but bin bash, we have to type that in in order to specify the shell. So let's press enter, boom. And it looks like I misspelled. Yeah, I did. I put a C instead of uh, a S. So let's press enter. And now we're under that account. And let me go down and uh, clear the screen so you guys can see what we're doing. It's at least at the top so you guys can see everything. So the first thing you, we need to do is change directories and we what we want to do is go to the var www directory so let's go cd and then var www and press enter and that'll take us to that directory now one thing with this account you won't see the location that you're in so this kind of goes back to the old school way of doing things in unix linux uh that's why the pwd command is so important that'll show you what directory that you're currently in and we're in for www so let's go down and use the git command and we'll download apache right fast and we'll download it to that directory so let's press uh, I'm just paste it in there, but it's basically to the GitHub link. Uh, and like I said, we were doing release five, which is the current version of Apache, and press enter, and it'll clone it down to the current directory that we're in. And it'll also name the file Apache or the folder Apache. So let's wait for this to finish and I'll be back. Cool. So we are done. Now, the next thing we need to do is go into the Apache directory under, you know, for www. So let's go CD and it might not uh, recognize it. Yeah, it will. OK, so CD and Apache. Now that we're in that directory, we can run Composer now. And like I stated, the whole purpose of putting it in user local bin that gives it access to all the users on the system. So this account www-data can actually run composer so let's run composer and like i said it's gonna install all the dependencies for apache so say control uh, composer and then install and press enter and i'll go through and down i'll download them and then install all our dependencies and you might see a warning here or there uh but just ignore it uh this should fix everything for you it'll install everything that you need okay so we're done with that account we don't need to log in we can actually log out of this account we've installed all the dependencies and we're good to go so we can go back to our josh account i'm gonna uh, clear the screen again so we can go into our database setup and i'm gonna paste everything in just to make it pretty simple or pretty quick but let's go down and install marion db so let's press enter and basically all i did was sudo apt install marin db dash server and then let's press enter that'll go through and install marin db for us and then after this we're going to secure it which uh by using the built-in script that's needed in order to have a secure mysql account so it's sudo uh mysql like i said it's a built-in script it'll go through verify the passwords as you can see it's asking for my root password boom and it's a couple of things that it'll fix within marion db like for instance this this is just changing the root account if you want to but i'm not going to change i'm going to use the same password but then remove anonymous users i'm going to hit yes disallow root login remotely i'm going to hit yes uh remove test database and access to it and hit yes and then reload privilege tables and press yes boom we're good to go so our mysql server is secure now this is not all you need to do you need to verify a lot of other things in your mysql server and just develop in the most secure way possible because you can still create vulnerabilities 
via whatever application you're running on it or whatever databases that you have running on it uh the application that sits on top of it that talks with the mysql server you need to make sure that's secure as well but anyway i'm rambling let me just, let's go down and log into our mysql server so we can uh create the database for Apache. so the command is basically sudo mysql and then the user root and then the password it's going to access for the for our password boom we're going to type that in and now we're in our server and i'm going to run through these commands or these queries right fast basically what i'm going to do is create a database uh, and i'm going to name that database Apache. so it's basically create database Apache. make sure you put that semicolon at the end press enter and that'll create our database and now we need to create the user uh and i already have like i said all these queries written out but create user and then i'm naming it amp so that's the username and i'm giving it a password a very simple password so just press enter and as long as you don't see any errors with the query when you run it uh, you good to go you typed everything in properly and like I said I'll put all the commands down in the description of the video but that is granting all the privileges to the Apache and Apache database to the amp user account that we just created so we get to go there and then now let's flush the privileges boom and that'll uh, refresh everything for us. And now the last thing we could do is type in exit. That'll exit us out of Marion DB. So we have everything set up so we can get Apache installed. Now the last thing is setting up your Apache configuration, not Apache, but your Apache configuration file for the Apache server that we're finna run on it, or the Apache website that we're finna run on it. So, and I already had a config typed out but i'm gonna show you guys where to actually put it but you basically put it under uh and i'm gonna type sudo nano and then let's go etc and i misspelled nano but etc apache 2 and then sites uh dash available i'm gonna tab it out and then let's go down and create our apache config and i'm gonna name it just ampache.conf and press enter that'll create that file for us in that location and like i said i already have the virtual host information you know for this configuration file so i'm gonna paste it in there you guys should see it pop up but really all i'm gonna do is run it off the ip address and i believe that's wrong so let me grab the right ip address um and yeah it is that's the wrong ip address so let me go back up here to the top and delete out the ip address and paste in the correct one boom and then hit Control x and then y to actually save you know our changes to that file and now we're good to go on that and just to show you something super cool but you could test your config so let's say you made a syntax error or something like that you can test your apache configuration by using apache ctl and then config test and this will actually test our files uh and as you can see could not reliably determine the server fully so yeah that's just something else but it says the syntax is okay so we're good to go and basically it's because the server name is pointing to our ip address typically that will point to a domain but as you can see it says syntax error I mean, syntax is okay, so we get to go with the config. Now, one thing with Apache is it always it always has a default website uh, that pops up. So let's go down and disable that right fast. So we can type sudo uh, a2 d i s s i t e, and then the default site is the 00, uh, zero dash default dot config. So we'll go down and disable that site. And let's enable our Apache, you know, config. So let's go sudo uh, a2 en site and I tabbed it out. And then we could do Apache dot config, press enter, and that'll enable our Apache site. So let's go down and uh, reload our Apache server. So we can type system 
ctl and you don't have to type sudo I, I keep forgetting about that that's something new that they added i used to have to write type sudo every single time but ever since these newer versions of ubuntu come out you don't have to type sudo for some reason uh when you're reloading apache also restarting it'll ask you for your password but it'll run it and then won't ask you for anything right away or you don't have to have your sudo account or sudo typed in in order to actually authenticate with the server to restart the service so as you can see you know we good to go it says authenticating as josh boom good to go okay so we're good to go let's go down and test the apache server because we're going to go through the install on that side now so let's switch over back to my web browser okay so let's finish the installation of apache the last thing we need to do is basically go to the website uh, and like I did in the configuration file, I just used the IP address. So that'll take us right there. And this is the last part of the installation. And hopefully you remember your database password because you're going to need that during this process. So we just hit start configuration and basically all this is is configuring the system. Now it'll run some requirement checks. Uh, it'll check to make sure you have a MySQL server and everything, and you have all the PHP modules installed on the system and all the dependencies that are needed. Now, this is one warning right here, but this is basically the PHP max upload size. We can easily go in and change that option in a PHP.ini file that allow you to up the upload size. And so let's uh, hit continue there and this is where you'll set up your mysql database and what you want to do is use that account that we created so all we have to do is type uh, amp which is the account let me grab that password from my notes right fast and just drop that in boom uh we don't need to create the database so you can uncheck that all we needed to do is cut create the tables since we already have the database name in there as Apache. So let's hit insert uh, database and that'll do the connection or test the connection as well as create the tables for us. And if you look here, it says generate configuration file. This is basically where it goes through and generate everything. Now you might want to put in the domain name there if you want to, uh, but you don't have to, but it says installation type optimize Apache for your use case. So they got three different options here. Uh, the default is Apache is configured for personal use with the best features and then minimalist only essential features are enabled to simply stream your music from the web interface. And then there's a community version and it says recommended settings when using Apache as a front end for a music community. And this is way, what you want to use the community version is if you have multiple people logging into the server. So that's basically what it is. It basically activates where users can create an account. If they have the link to the server, they can go in and create an account. And then you can go in and approve it on the admin side and then give them whatever permissions that you want. And then right here, transcoding, I always use FFmpeg. That was the whole purpose of us installing FFmpeg is to use that as the transcoder. And then they do have some players. It said Apache is more than only a web interface, uh, several backends and implement it or implement it to ensure you can stream your media to any player. So you can select each backend to enable. So they have the web interface, which is already checked Apache API and then Subsonic, uh, UPnP, uh, DAP and web dev and dap is for itunes so you can you know set that up for that and so the next thing you want to do is just hit create config and that'll create the configuration for you and one thing i forgot to do was uh actually put in the username and password for my sequel again so let's just drop that in there as well as the password and let me make sure i i'm pasting in the password boom and then we're gonna go with the default. And then like I said, FFmpeg. And if we scroll down and then ignore this and we could just hit create config, boom. And now the last step is actually create the initial account, which is an admin account. This will have full rights on the server. So let's just type in a random password for it. 
and just make sure you remember what this password is because this is what you're going to need to log into the server and manage the server using your admin account you know you can modify users permissions and all that good stuff so let's hit create account so that's pretty much it but let's go down and log into the server now we use that admin account and then type in our password for it boom and now we have a working Apache server and the way you add files and I'll quickly show you guys this but the way you add files it they basically call it catalogs uh, and this is where you'll point it to a directory on your server where the media is stored or it could be a share or something on your network uh, you add the categories and it'll go through and download you know album art and all the information behind the music that you have on your server and just to give you a quick representation of what it all can look like if you go back to apache.org uh, you can look at some of the previews right here and this kind of shows you images of it and then also they do have demos and i'll go down and go to one of the demos so you guys can see uh and this is one of the ones i actually like let's click here dog dogmatic boom or at least the design of it you know what i'm saying and then you can change it to english right there but that's built into chrome but anyway this is you know this is a demo server you know with music on it i just kind of wanted to show you what it'll actually look like so you can click on it you know look at the music that's there uh it lists out everything you know all the music for that album you can just hit play all album the full album and you can play it right here you know within the browser now i hope you guys enjoyed the video hopefully that walks you through the full process of setting up an apache server it's not that difficult it's only a few commands if you run into any issues feel free to leave comments down in the comments below and i'll respond and try to help you as best i can but if you're a music head like i'm a music head then something like this will definitely help you out to by managing all your music that you have stored digitally and you can play it from like anywhere in the world like i stated which is super super cool so please like share and subscribe to the channel and of course keep it techy